How's it going guys? My name is Alex. Good evening. And welcome to a video where I'm gonna be covering the settings, the much requested uh, video from you guys. I'm not saying that I'm a pro player, although I made it to Division 1 with three different playstyles. I've shown you games against top 100 ranked uh, opponents. I was following a lot of channels, I've been playing this game for since the football came out pretty much. And I've been following a lot of Japanese channels who are definitely considered to be pro players. And I checked their settings as well. And uh, I wanted to share my experience, what are the graphics for the gameplay, depending on your device, what are the settings that I'm using. I'm playing on advanced controls, so that's different. Uh, not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, uh, but you see graphics. Let's start with that. My frame rate is 60 frames per second, and I think regardless of the device you have, I think it is important to have a frame rate at 60 frames per second and then improve on your graphics. You either start with the lowest and then get to the low and then standard. And if your device is capable of handling, there is no FPS drop, there is everything working fine, your device is not overheating, Clear so responsive, no input delay or whatnot, then you uh, can switch to high and on high graphics you can see a definite improvement. Uh, this season, uh, Konami has improved high graphics. It looks like a console game. It's actually very fun to play this game finally. Uh, my device is capable of running uh, both I'm playing on iPad 5th generation. It's good for me. Uh, then I'm using a control type touch and flick. Most of you guys will be using classic. And there is a way uh, to decide which control type are you using, pressure style or standard. I would suggest you try both and seeing what works for you better. But for me, when I used to play on classic controls, I liked it when I could swipe to the right or to the left. I think it worked both ways and activate the matchup. And this is a very, very important way to uh, kind of like uh, control the zone. You're not necessarily like trying to chase the player. You're not being aggressive. When your opponent is attempting a skill move or when your opponent is attempting to uh, run at you or like play one, two passes or like maybe like a pass into a zone, you're covering that with a defender and when you're activating matchup most of the time that can result in a successful block. The pressure style is good for me. Standard is also great. It's just like you need to experiment and see what works for me for you. But you see, this is great out for me because my controls are uh, touch and flick. Uh, for uh, the directional stick type, I am using move one. But I think for the devices which are smaller than an iPad uh, or an iPad mini for that matter for me, I think fixed would be beneficial because for the move, it oftentimes requires a lot of extra additional real estate and space on your device. I think fixed would work better for mobile devices, although you need to one more time experiment. Off, I would not recommend you actually using because it's just like you don't have that visual representation of where your player is moving. And that is actually very important and I need that I need that feedback. So I can play without the buttons because I'm playing on advanced, but playing without the joystick or uh, the directional stick tab is really difficult for me. Cursor change manual and this is recommended if you really want to play on a higher level or anticipate the movement. You can start playing with assisted if you're a beginner, but playing on manual is where it's at because you can definitely switch the player that you want whenever you want and control the zone or like ask uh, your other defender to double pressure and then select the player that you really, really want and essentially uh, be much more effective in defense. And then this is a really interesting uh, setup. So there is narrow, medium and wide for movement input range. Many people are wondering what's that and one more time it depends on your device again i feel like white is fitting most of the devices but some people may struggle with white because one more time it requires a lot of real estate to uh, make a full circle with your player like if you sometimes skill moves is effective way to beat an opponent but sometimes just like turning around with the ball and like predicting when your opponent is going to be tackling you from one direction and just turn around into another direction and for that you're doing that exact circle motion with your joystick or directional stick tap and uh, trying to get away from the tackle. So why would be uh, implying that your circle with that joystick or directional stick tap would be very wide and essentially narrow is very narrow. I'm using wide because I like wide, but I've seen Macajon Games, for instance, he's using narrow. This is my preference and this is how I'm using and then cursor type is player name, uh, next player indicator. I would suggest turning all of that on if it isn't. Um, radar is important. I think displaying radar is beneficial because the device is only allowing you to see so much of the field. For a tablet, I think I'm put at disadvantage actually because I my my vision is like obstructed because of the uh, form factor of the device. But 
if you are using a mobile, you actually have a, like a little bit more width of the pitch. I rely on the Razer a lot when it is about like to see, can I switch to a player? And in a very stressful situations, when you're being chased by an opponent, you don't really have time to like take additional touches. You need to play that first time pass, very beneficial. So having a Raider is important. Samina Goji and display player names opponent's team. Yeah, I would uh, set that on. So these are uh, the main settings. So speaking of the camera, it is one more time personal preference. I like dual, uh, but a lot of people who are playing on mobile devices uh, smaller than a tablet, for instance, they are using dynamic wide or wide. And this is uh, three cameras that I would suggest you experiment with. So when it comes down to my team, my preference, I'm playing quick counter at the moment. I might be switching to possession, a long bone counter. I like playing with different play styles, but it is important to have a proper manager. So if I want to change the play style, I need to first and foremost change the manager like that. For instance, I want to play possession and then I go to uh, my team. Uh, again, I click on the manager and you see my quick counter play style is not really good with uh, Pep Guardiola or Luis Roman. I change team play style to possession game and uh, that's how I'm getting the most of my team. And every player is getting a proper boost. So that's also a nice detail. I made uh, like a separate explanation how it works in my other video about uh, the training guide, uh, how to train players. But you see, when you're setting a proper manager and setting the play style that corresponds to uh, that manager, you're getting a boost plus two or plus one, uh, depending on the stat on each player. So that is an important setting. You need to ensure that your team not only it's all about like your controls, but it's also important to make sure that your team is set up properly and it performs uh, well because everyone in their proper position and everyone can uh, benefit from this boost from the manager and his playstyle is uh, at green <laughs> color here. Every team, and you see, like I just set up this team recently and I even didn't set it up. Obviously, captain should be a player who has the captaincy skill, not necessarily this like uh, blue numbers. Player to join attack, what does it mean and what are the numbers to the right? So player to join attack are players who are, have great heading skills and usually when you add aerial superiority skill on a player, he gets plus 10. This is something that is not really displayed uh, in any other uh, heading stat or like jumping stat. This is something that you are getting displayed over here. So for instance, if Van Dyke didn't have aerial superiority skill, his heading would be 88. And then when you're getting that aerial superiority skill on Van Dyke, you're getting it to 98. So that's just an example. Obviously, Van Dyke has the aerial, aerial superiority skill. So I suggest picking him over here. On the second, like it's down the middle, I would say it can be Kunde, for instance. And then player to join attacks number three, it can be Tamiyasu. So what does it mean is that Every time you're taking a corner, all of your three defenders will be waiting in the box, camping in the box. You need to ensure that you're fine with that because if your opponent is intercepting the ball, he's clearing the ball, you'll be exposed because all of your three defenders are already camping the opponent's box. They are not helping you in defense. So you need to be cautious. But these are my settings. Usually I attribute all three. Um, I assign all three defenders or all three tall players who can head the ball. Uh, on the corner situation. So these have been the settings. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know uh, if you did. Subscribe for more. Drop a like. Join the Discord. There's lots of people are hanging out and can help you out with building your team. And I'll see you next. Peace.